What's up, guys? I am on tour with the Jokers through August. It is the last leg of our Drive Drive tour. This is the last time to see any of this material, and we have a bunch of cities up right now that we've added. Uh, April 19th will be in Cincinnati, then Youngstown. April 21st in Chicago at the Chicago Theater. We're doing Foxwoods. We're doing Atlantic City in July. Radio City Music Hall, our first show in New York City in years. It's been pre-pandem since we've done radio uh, new york and we're doing radio city that's may 5th uh that's a sunday and we are doing that with uh joe de rosa your favorite taste buddy will be joining us on that show so if you if you haven't seen joe live you haven't seen us together come on out it's a really fun show then we're doing orlando atlanta mobile alabama and the list goes on and on grantville pennsylvania bethel new york saratoga springs even Maine, New Hampshire, Syracuse, Durham. Everything's up right now at SavileCanoComedy.com. Get the tickets. We'll see you on the road. Thank you. Folks, Joe DeRosa here, your taste buddy, and you're my taste buddies, and I'd like to spend time with my buddies. Where? When I'm out on the road. Folks, I'm hitting that big open road with my new hour. I never promised you a rose garden. Where am I going to be? When am I going to be? Well, Beacon, New York on April 12th at the Town Crier Cafe. Wilmington, Delaware at the Queen Wilmington on April 19th. May 3rd, Hamden, Connecticut, and May 25th, I'll be in Newport, Rhode Island at the Jane Pickens Theater. Here's another thing, though. Where am I not doing my hour, but I'm appearing live, and you can see me do stand-up that's not part of my hour, and it's not my show, but I'm with some friends. Well, May 5th, that's where Radio City Music Hall, I'm with the Impractical Jokers, opening up the big show at the biggest place in the big old city we all live in. I can't wait to be there. I hope to see you for that, too. More dates are coming, people. If you want tickets to my shows, go to JoeDeRosa.com. Again, check me out also with the Jokers at Radio City Music Hall. And of course, if you're in New York, come on down to Joey Rose's. We're open seven days a week at 1130 every morning. Great drinks, great sandwiches. As always, JoeyRoses.com. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the... <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. That's very nice. After, and you're wearing the Wawa. After you mentioned Wawa in the last episode, you're wearing the this Wawa. This is my old one. Can you do me a favor? On camera? Can you look at the size of this one? Because I think it might be too, it's too big and I need to go down. Uh, it says XL, I think. I what can't see. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The uh, XL. This is an XL? Maybe a large one. The yeah, XL is a little big. While watching. Uh, you can you know, just send it a large. Okay. Anything else I can do for you? No, no. But I, I mean, I'm your number one fan. <laughs> I doubt that sometimes. Yeah. I tell that so much, but you, you go do from, you, you go from number one to last, <laughs> but you're polarizing. This is what you do. We had a heated last episode, uh, and now you're you you're 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 weaseling back into my heart with the salsa <laughs> windfall hat. <laughs> Want to start the app? No, we're started. This is it. I know, but you it started like, when you walked on. I know. That's what, I know, but I, I it did. I asked him. Yeah, is, are you running? But 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 I, I thought you you like to say TST butts. We both like to. Right, I, I guess that's what like I'm saying. To? Do you want to officially do that? Because you always are like, all right, let's start this. What's happening to us? Mm -hmm. Are we changing? Are we growing apart? I am who I always will be. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I might try to grow apart from that. Okay. You... <laughs> all right. Ready? Ta Wait, no. Welcome to T-A-S-T-E -E Buds. Buds. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm a little tired. We just did an episode about uh, uh, Starbucks versus 7-Eleven. I'm uh, we it got way more heated than I thought it was going to get. Well, if you want to just be bouncing off the walls, get yourself a frappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Were you surprised it got that heated? I was. I, I was surprised. I'm yeah. tired, but I'm going to hydrate with the water I got at 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sell it in that glass now. <laughs> No, I poured it out. It's, yeah. I poured it from a bottle. That's weird. I bought a Poland Spring there and I poured it into a cup. That's weird because I was over there and all I found was Kirkland waters. Mm, well, well, I mean, that. Um, I uh, uh, did you? Oh, by the way, shout out Kirkland. Did you know the pig had his own what is holiday? It? No, why does everything have its own day? Can we stop? 
Why? Why does everything have its own day? Why does a pig have its own day? It's National Every Pig Day. Every dog has his day. Every pig has his day. You don't want to celebrate day. the Stefano? There's a national everything. There's a national co-worker day, a national secretary oh. day, national siblings day, I'm, a natural, like, something awareness day. I don't know. It's just every day is something. So, I am going to go hog wild on social media <laughs> on National Pig Day. I mean, I'm going to, I mean, I don't oh, hog wild. I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> wow. That's you how the brain try to do that's that. That's how the brain works, baby. It works. It's just, it's always working without me even knowing. It, that's what, I mean, you're, you're, years you're pushing, your brain is just pushing out dad jokes when you don't even realize it. <laughs> um, um, happy birthday to everybody whose birthday is today. That's fun to do. Oh, that is fun to do. <laughs> right? Like, like, listen or look into the camera. And today is your birthday for real. Look at me. Happy birthday. <laughs> Um, somebody cooked something in here moments ago. I, I was cooking on that last it Smells step. delicious. No, so, no, I know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three of us in the room. The, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, Trevor Karate cooked today? He cooked something over there. It smells like he made a Brazilian you steak. something? What is, what, what oh, is it? Oh. Oh, Trader Joe's Rosemary Chicken. We almost did Trader Joe's. That's yeah, why he suggested did. it. Okay. Uh, wow, this smells really good, doesn't it? It just smells like something. You know, I, I don't smell it, I'm, and I'm not like, oh my God, like, what is that? I think it smells very nice. I think you're hungry and it smells like, you know. If I food. walked in, if I was married and I walked in from a long Isn't day's work. Isn't that a work. nice thing when you walk home? Well, regardless of sex, age, this or that, but like even the, you romanticize it. I like it. You come home from a long day's work or you wake up in the morning to smell, but coming home and opening that door and smelling like a delicious, something delicious. Yeah, it's nice. Isn't it great? It's nice. I've it's, never had it in my adult life because I've only been single. But you've walked home to your home at mom or dad, you know, like so you've you've had the experience. Uh my mother and father, I haven't seen them in thirty years. Okay. Um, yeah. No, yeah. Sometimes you go to your mom's for yeah, the, a Sunday visit or something. But I'm saying if I was married and I walked in and I smelled that aroma when I, I walked in. I get it all the time. I would I would do the thing where I walked up to behind my wife as she was at the stove I know it. and hug her from it's the back and kiss her on the sitcom, yes. Yeah, the cheek. Yeah, listen, I uh, my 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 gal uh, is a phenomenal cook, and I get to come home to that. Uh, she cooks like I don't even know, like when we're not crazy busy, she probably cooks four or five days a week. That's great. It's really good, and she's a really good cook too. She, she is a good cook. Yeah. So I, I I get that experience. I really do love it. And just the other day, I came home and I smelled something, and I said, "This this smells absolutely delicious." You. You little son of a gun! What did you What did you cook up today? And she said, "I heated up rosemary chicken from Trader Joe's." <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. That was good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you've gone into your. I've noticed this about you in recent weeks. After we have a heated one, you go into a very. Subdued, I don't need two of those in a row. I don't need two of those in a row. That's why I do this. Yeah, I do it for us. Yeah. But you are I do it for the listener. You are very subdued now. Oh, you're talking about. All right. <laughs> Why yeah, it is it's almost a defense mechanism. Like you're going back into your shell, like a turtle. What I'm doing right now. The turtle has snapped. Now the turtle's back in the shell. So you think what I'm doing right now is a defense mechanism? I think it just because uh, I'm very, very relaxed. <laughs> I think there's not much I can do with it. I don't know. You know? I think maybe just talk to me as a friend, like we're in the room together. You know what I mean? Let me give a little taste of what's, what's going to happen later. What's going to happen later? Cheetos. <laughs> I'm, I'm already getting annoyed with you. Uh, Cheetos. Get, don't do this. I don't, I don't like this bit. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Stop. What? Just I be normal. Relax? Just talk to you're me. You're getting mad that I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm not mad. No, no, I'm not mad. Just, but just talk you to me. You said you're getting annoyed and no, don't no, do it. No, no, you're doing a bit. That's what I'm getting annoyed at the bit. <laughs> I thought you would laugh because my big argument for Cheetos was going to be like, and that's it because I'm so relaxed. I get, no, I got it. It was better than Hog Wild. It was, <laughs> Hog Wild was an accident. <laughs> Hog, Hog Wild was an accident. <laughs> I picture you saying that on a date and then going home and regretting it and just like the next to like just obsessing over it, especially you, and then calling her out of nowhere and she was like, hello, and you don't even say any, you go, I'm called while it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the guy I love. Uh, 
All right, today's argument. Well, or today's battle, excuse me. All right, you don't want to... Well, no, a I'm going to just a little more. No, no, no. no I'm, 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 oh, I'm just oh. announcing what it is. Fair, fair, yeah, fair. I'm not starting okay. it. Um, ow! Oof. Oh, that sucked. Yeah. Uh, I'm t- sorry about that. It's okay. It's not your fault. Don't take that out on the listeners, please. It's whoever put this here. <laughs> uh, today's battle is going to be Cheetos versus Pringles. Sal is team Pringles. I am team Cheetos. I am very curious to see where this is going to go. For the percentage votes at the end or between us? Both. Yeah, I don't know who would win this. I don't know. Both. I will say this. In this season, so far this season, I've learned that anything can happen with us. Sure. With or without a chance. It could go in any direction. Right. That's right. Uh, But also, too, with the fans, with the vote. Like, I mean, look, man, these are two snack foods that are off the beaten track. Not off the, I'm sorry, that's the wrong term, that are a little out of the ordinary. Pringles are not your typical potato chip. They were the first, as far as I know, baked style chip, mm-hmm. potato chip, yeah. way before baked lays or any oh, of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I remember the are first. Are they baked? The first time I had baked lays, I was Depressed. like, "This tastes like Pringles." I don't think I don't think Pringles are baked. There's something. Are they baked? Let's pull. Actually, let's pull up. They're definitely. Let's not get into like, other histories. Let's, yeah. let's pull it from when we from when we begin because yeah. I'd like to get into that. They're definitely not like, but they're not. They're, they're definitely not like the fried potato chips. You know that we're no, used no, to. No, no, yeah, no. They're, they're, they're actually pressed because they all have to be the same exact shape. They're fried. They are fried. That's wild. Pringles are the fried. They don't taste fried at all. That's. A, I guess that's a plus. You know. So so they take these little. They're called dough veils. You're hearing it here first, though. You know, they um, taste, taste a fried chip that tastes baked. I mean, it's crazy. I swear to God, the first time I ate baked lays, I was like, "Oh, Pringles are baked." That yeah, was the first thing I thought. It's because it's, it's the consistency. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. They add Pringles powder to a blender. Oh boy, we're already off to a bad start. <laughs> they add oil and water to the powder. They blend it up. They pour it into a bowl. They pour that onto a tray. And then they cut the shapes out of the tray. So this is not even a potato chip. It's a, it's it's a, a concoction. Crisp. It's a potato crisp. It doesn't say chip on the bottle. Oh, uh, it says crisp? Yeah. I never knew that. But what does that mean? It's like potato starch and stuff? But what is Pringles powder? V, do you got a mic? I mean, only God knows that. I mean, tell Only me God about and it. The, and, the, and that's on I the mean, lock look, and key. I'm defending Cheetos. I mean, I don't even know what the hell flavor cheese is I on don't those know what things. That is, but that's got uh, all yeah. sorts. Of, that's got stuff banned in the UK in it. <laughs> I know that for a fact. You got red dye A through Z in that thing. Yeah, it says it's made from dehydrated processed potato. Yeah. Okay. They also contain which makes corn. sense because I love the taste of instant potato uh, mashed potatoes. It does. Okay. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Uh, and they also contain corn, rice, and wheat. I ain't mad um, at it. I ain't what, mad at it. What year were Pringles? Uh, what year did they drop? I'm going to guess the 60s. Yeah. Can we just make? Yeah, I should have brought my glasses. 1968. Wow, Joe. Wow. All right. And they popped and they haven't stopped, right? Procter and Gamble assigned a task to a chemist. Okay, let's read about this. This is fun. In 1956, Procter and Gamble assigned a task to chemist Frederick J. Bauer. Wow, he died in 2008. He lived 90 years. He just to develop a new kind of potato chip to address consumer complaints about broken, greasy, and stale chips. All which uh you know that he has solved. Yes. Pringles are not greasy nor broken nor stale. So wow, that's three banging things right there. Yeah. No grease. Think about that. No grease, no stale, mm-hmm. no broken. How do they not have grease though if they're frying them? It's like, uh, it's not that traditional oily grease, though. It okay. really isn't. Right. As well as air in the bags. They didn't like that people filled up the bags. Like, we, we've all been there. Content settled during shipping, right? Yes. You got a bag full of potatoes, you open up, it's the last, it's like 10% of the bag. Down there. Yeah, but I will say as I get older, I understand the protective measure of the air in the bag versus... Is that what it is? Yeah, they put, they put, look, I'm sure they're also taking advantage and putting a little less in, but sure. the reason for the air in the bag is to protect the chips. Okay. Bauer spent two years developing 
saddle-shaped chips and fried dough and selected a tubular can as the chips container. The saddle shape of Pringles chips is mathematically known as a hyperbolic paraboloid. Okay. Oh, sounds delicious. <laughs> However, Bauer could not figure out how to make the chips palatable and was pulled off the task to work on another brand. In the mid-60s, another researcher, Alexander, L how would you pronounce that, Lipa? Lipa. Uh, of Ohio, restarted Bauer's work and succeeded in improving the taste. Wow, Bauer must have been pissed. Yeah. Although Bauer designed the shape of the Pringles chip, Lipa's name is on the patent. Oh, come on, That's Lipa. Gene Wolfe, a mechanical engineer and author for the science fiction and fantasy novels, helped develop the machine that cooked them. That's weird. <laughs> okay. In 1968, P&G first marketed Pringles in Indiana. But wait, where, they skipped a major thing here. Where does the name come from? Well, they that just... hasn't been real yet. We'll go. Well, they said they started marketing them, which meant they had the name. Like they yeah, just that might not come now. That might come later in the marketing section. This is an overview. The okay. top is an overview. All right. Uh, a ring. This is a ring. This is the television Wait, commercials. We got to go back to where were we there? Pringles were first marketed as newfangled potato chips, but mm -hmm. the name didn't stick. No one is certain where the name Pringles originated. Oh, I like a bit of legend and mystery around something, <laughs> but some think it could be an homage to the patent holder. For the potato processing equipment, or it's the name of a street. Well, that's a, it's a big stretch from one to the other, a big jump from one to the other. Uh, pr oh, that's a good point. Newfangled. Whoever did, uh, thought of the newfangled potato chip line should have been fired right, right away. Uh. <laughs> New, See, newfangled. I think that's fun. I though. love the word newfangled, but you, you're gonna have you trying to build a brand and you're trying to be a clear on what you are. But but newfangled. Is, you, I like it because it sounds very Wonka esque to me. Yeah. If you, if I all love of a sudden, the, I love the word, but I think it's like I don't know. That's I. I would think that wouldn't stick. You're in a stick. store in 1968. You're in the potato chip aisle. I don't even know if they had potato chips aisles in 1968. Right. But you're wherever they sell potato chips. Right. And you look up one day. And you see tubes, and you're like, what the hell is this? What did they misplace in the potato chip section? Right. And then on the tube, you see that it icon. It says Pringles Newfangled Potato Chip. I would be like, this, what are we doing? Let's go. This, this yeah, is I exciting. think I see it working in the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you're, I, let, let's, I can't want to swipe up so I can see that one. Uh, it's basically just saying that Pringles was... Uh, there's a lot of rumors like, oh, it was named after a street, named after someone who worked at PNG. So there, okay. it's not confirmed about where the name well, comes from. Well, I was going to lean into the fact uh, they both have unique names, and they, I think they're both made up names. Pringles is a really fun name. It, it Pringles rhymes with jingle, and jingle is really fun. Now Pringles is a fun name, but is it as fun as Cheetos? I don't know. It's got the Cheetos word cheat is fun. In it. I don't like the thing with cheat. The word cheat in it. Cheetos invented in 1948. Cheat codes, cheating by Fritos. Cheating oh my God! First of all, right out of the gate, the guy that invented Fritos invented Cheetos. This guy's got two, two. He's got two of the top ten. Yeah, under well, his belt. That is nuts, dude. Fritos and Cheetos. This guy's. This is the Nintendo of uh, of uh, Charles, snacks. Charles. Charles. I. Elmer Doolin. Charles Elmer Doolin, who cooked early test batches in the Frito Company's research and development kitchen in Dallas. The cheese-flavored snacks sold quickly, but Doolin did not have the production or distribution capacity to support the nationwide launch. This led Doolin to partner with potato chip businessman Herman W. Lay. Lay's, for, baby. Lay's for marketing distribution, and Cheetos was introduced nationally in the U.S. in 1948, along with a potato product called Frittatos. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to know now. I want to know what frittados were. It's probably what Fritos became. No, no. The success of Cheetos it's prompted potato Doolin product. and Lay to merge their two companies in '61, forming Frito Lay. At the time, Cheetos was one of the large, the four large snack food brands produced by the company, which had annual revenues of 127 million. That's in '61. Wow. Frito Lay merged with the Pepsi Cola company to form PepsiCo. In 1965, prompting further distribution of Cheetos outside of North America. While Cheetos were not the first snack food of its kind, uh, Elmer's Chewies were created before that. Never newer competing products in the snack I can't, I don't know the category 
have since emerged. <laughs> yeah. Including Utz cheese curls, Hurd's cheese curls. They're talking about all the biters. Wise cheese doodles, planter's cheese puffs. Uh, can you please show us what these things are? Frittatos? Yeah, look at this. I know what a frittata is. Yeah. Dude, look at that. It's like a... Oh, that's just the... I was like, I'm an idiot. But what, so what's the significance of the name frittata? Because Frito used to make potato chips. But they're, they're Fritos. No, no, no. There's, it's called frittatos instead of potatoes. Then what are Fritos? Fritos are corn, corn. chips. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm an idiot. I was like, what is it, a flat chip? And then I realized it's just the bag flattened out. <laughs> okay, so it was a potato. But then, but, uh, oh, oh, because that was before they merged with Lay, and then Lay put out Lay's, Frito Lay's. So with, with Cheetos, right? It's a fun name, but and then they got the cheetah. I get the doing right. Uh, Chester Cheetah. Let's talk about Chester Cheetah. The first Cheetos mascot was the animated Cheetos mouse. Oh, that's not good because mice eat cheese. That doesn't. I don't, why would you put a mouse, a rodent, as the? You know what I mean? Well, for like the over in the warehouses, was there a bunch of uh, Cheeto mouses running? Oh, well, look, around? dude, it was the seventies. Uh, a mouse eats cheese, as you said, and Mickey Mouse was. Was probably peaking oh, around this then. Is so. Hysterical! The Cheetos mouse spoke with an upper class accent <laughs> and typically wore a three piece suit. He used slogans. He used his slogans: Cheetos, cheese that goes crunch. And several years later, Hi Chisa, Hail Cheeser. Okay, babe, you got to get some classes, man. I got them. I just not on. Gee, me. That wasn't even English. What you just said. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was like Hi Chi. Like uh, <laughs> no. You want me just to read this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mouse, the mouse was, was seen in television commercials and print ads for Cheetos until the character was phased out around 1979. Uh, beginning in 2008, Cheetos advertising and promotion broadened and regarded to age appeal and revised focus on the adult demographic. In this personification, Chester Cheetah started to speak with a mid Atlantic accent and encourages people to use their Cheetos in acts of revenge to so or to solve problems. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chester Cheetah was born in uh, eight, oh, in 86. Wow, dude. I didn't know he went back like that. Yeah, so Ch Chester Cheetah is going to be 40 years old in a couple of years. Holy God. Dangerously cheesy was the slogan from 97 <laughs> onward. Can you please pull up a, on YouTube? Uh, uh, a Cheeto, the Cheetos mouse. I want to see a Cheetos mouse commercial. You won't be able to play it. Well, no. we can watch it real quick. Just to, I just want to see here. While we're waiting, Cheetos, Ch Chester Cheetah gives off to me Pepe Le Pew vibes. I feel like he's like, probably he's like, a, he might have some date accusations against him. I don't get Pepe Le Pew. I don't get, uh, uh, I don't get the handsy, the salty vibes from Cheetah, but I do get a pimp vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Not homeless pimp. No. Like a pimp. Yeah, he definitely, I feel like he's smooth in, you know, to show face, but I mean, behind the, behind closed doors, I don't know what he's capable of. I feel like of. he's got a, I feel like he's got a Coke spoon around his neck that we can't see. Yeah. I feel like he's doing he's a few bumps in the bathroom. Claw. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I feel like he dips he's in He's got a out. long pinky claw. This is the Cheetos mouse. Jesus Lord. Wow, animation's come a long way. It looks like a mouse 71. eating a turd. Yeah, they, they told that delicate crunch to take a walk. So Cheetos used to have two crunches. Mm. Well, All that right. was some uh, rudimentary animation, huh? I have to pee very badly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave the room. Mm -hmm. Please do not do what Ari Shafir did and rub your ass all over the couch. Good thing you said it. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. So, Chester Cheater, uh, is he too cool for school? Jury's still out as well. He wears sunglasses indoors. I get douche vibes. I get douche chills from Chester Cheetah. Now, the Pringles guy, he's your everyman. And his, his name is Julius Pringles, which I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, Mr. P, also known as Julius Pringles, is the mascot of Pringles. Mr. P was de uh, designed by Arch. Arch Drummond in 1967 and became the face of the chip brand Pringles. The story behind him. Let's click on that. Now, this guy, you look at him, you know what you're getting. I would ask this guy for directions. You know, I would, I would, I would, I would, you know, if this guy, this guy looks like he's ripping tickets on a train. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, 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 he feels warm. He feels familiar. He feels trustworthy. This cheetah walking around, 
you know, just with his glasses on and indoors, trying to be like slicker than he needs to be. And, and, and he's trying, he's out to prove something. People that are cool, they don't have to tell you they're cool. It's just the cheat. Everyone's like, oh, he's so cool. He's so cool. Like, let me feel it. You know what I mean? This Pringles guy, I never heard him talk, but I guarantee you, even if he sounds ridiculous, cool, really, the real definition, kids, and do me a favor, put the volume up on the computer, kids. <laughs> the real definition of being cool is being yourself. And Julius Pringles, I mean, with a name like that, <laughs> he probably got beat up a little bit in grammar school, but he saw it through and now he has an empire. Butcher Box. I love Butcher Box. You get incredible deals on premium cuts from Butcher Box. Deals this good are hard to come by at the grocery store. I love them. I have a subscription. Uh, I get them sent to my house. I have 14 pounds of protein and beef sent to me, frozen. And I have been eating with the Butcher Box proteins and meats since they've been a sponsor way back on this show. And I have had zero issues with anything. And it saves me time either having to go to the grocery store or while I'm in the grocery store, I just don't have to think about meat, poultry, fish, none of it. Also, this is what's really a big factor to me. I, you have to search out, and a lot of supermarkets don't have like the free range stuff, the, the, the grass fed stuff. You have to seek it out. This is just, this is the standard here, okay? So it's high quality meat and seafood. It's grass fed beef. It's a free range organic chicken. It's pork raised, crate free, and wild caught seafood. It's no antibiotics, no added hormones, okay? It's delivered right to your doorstep. There's free shipping, and you can curate your own box or take one of their own customized boxes. Eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. Butcher Box is offering our listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs. Two pounds of ground beef or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a whole year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash taste buds and use code taste buds to choose your free offer and get that $20 off. Sports fans and non sports fans alike, Prize Picks makes it easy to play daily fantasy sports. It is the largest platform in North America for daily fantasy sports. Uh, it's easy. It's exciting. You just bet against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players. And who knows, you know, you're not battling pros and sharks. Although I do like in my fantasy football, when there's a guy that doesn't know anything, we all take advantage. You don't want that. So you want to play with prize picks. You basically pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections in a week. And that's it. And that's how you could win. Okay. Um, I was playing heavy in the football season. Uh, that's my s sport of choice. And it, it kind of gives me a reason to root for games that I wasn't necessarily invested in. And I would just put down like, all right, is let's say Josh Allen going to have more than 300 yards today coupled with, you know, will Najee Harris run for 75 yards. And it's just, it's just funny. You're also rooting for that play the whole game then to hit it. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into a thousand dollars right now with NBA, NHL and college basketball entries. Yeah. America's number one fantasy sports. Out. Also, there are players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley that you can find in the community plays now under the promos tab in the app. And you can see some of the biggest names in the community and what they're playing each week. Price Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. So download the app today and use code TASTEBUDS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, download the app today for Price Picks and use the code TASTEBUDS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Price Picks. The Pringles logo is a stylized cartoon caricature of the head of a male figure, officially known as Julius Pringles, designed by Lewis Dixon with a large mustache and parted bangs. Until 2001, the character had eyebrows and his bow tie framed the product name. In 98, the bangs and lips were removed from the logo and his head was widened a little. In 2020, the character was again revised with a minimalistic approach. The mascot's name originated with a... A Wikipedia hoax? In 2006, an editor inserted the, the then hoax Julius into Pringles' Wikipedia article, no way, which is subsequently picked up by other news outlets. The, the editors supported and promoted their claim through creating a Facebook page to raise awareness of Julius Pringles being his name. Prior to this, the mascot was officially only known as Mr. P. No first name. By 2013, the name had spread, and in a, in a case of, I can't see that, Cytogenesis turned real. Kellogg formally acknowledged Julius Pringles. Now, so there's someone Julius walking around. Julius Pringles is the name of a pedophile. 
<laughs> Without question. It sounds like <laughs> what's Tom Hanks' character, David S. Pumpkins. It sounds a little bit like that in the in NSNL. I'm David S. Pumpkins. Wait, know? what was that? It Tom has, Hanks. Yeah, yeah. He, he does like a he Halloween. He does this bit. recurring SNL character. Oh, oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shout out Bobby Moynihan. Yeah, I got. I love you, Bobby. I got to tell you, he hasn't said that to me in years, Bobby. I got to tell you. Uh, Say to Bobby all the time. The, uh, I know. I know. Bobby Boynton is one of my favorite people. He's one of the funniest people on the planet. I'm not saying that to slight you. I'm talking about just for my Bobby, for real. Okay. Yeah. I he, didn't think you were slighting me until you just said that, though. No, I thought you would say you would think that because you always think that kind of the worst thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know where we are along in episodes right now, but... Uh, and new er episodes of Impractical Jokers are airing every Thursday night at 10. Uh, and Bobby Moynihan is a guest in this half season. So That's look nice. out for him. That's um, nice. So I, I read a little bit about Julius Pringles and he's uh -huh. upstanding, you know, and, 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 and what he's about at the talking about the date uh, cheetah that we talked about. No, no, no. <laughs> Julius Pringles touches children. <laughs> well, Chester <laughs> Cheetah. And Chester Cheetah does coke. <laughs> With a bunch of checks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know Chester Cheetah's snorting. The stuff we're eating is his... He snorts that stuff. I know. I it's don't like doubt his it. truck. <laughs> Look, think about Cheetos, okay? There's a huge product line. Wait, You're let's right? start the battle. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Time two. B-A-T-T-L-E, buds. Do we need a no matter what happens? Because it's been a tense day today. I'm fine. Are you, are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, here we go. One. No, no, no. Don't do it reluctantly. No, I'm doing, not doing it reluctantly. Okay. You yeah. know. Yeah. So it seems like a tap out. No. Come on, babe. All right. I'm here, babe. Come on. I'm here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the inhale was so good. You went. <laughs> All right. Ready? ready? No, no matter, matter what happens, I love you. you. No, no matter what happens, I love you. No matter what happens, I love you. Time to B A T T L E buds. All right. Here we go. All right, we covered some stuff, some stuff up top with Pringles already. Mm -hmm. One, the fact that it, the first of all, let's just start with the packaging. Okay, it's one of its kind. And by the way, Lay's and Ruffles, they they now have this plastic version of that, and they put out that product. And wait, what we, do you mean the plastic? Like they, like I think Lay's or Ruffles has now sells something in a cylinder. It's plastic. It's everything oh, okay. came from the the OG. Julius Pringles is the OG. Pringles is the OG. Once you pop, you can't stop. I mean, it is the most fun packaging in the world. I I love it. It's my favorite packaged snack food. Th is this? I love the minis. Okay, I like just I like turning the can sideways and they slide down. And uh, I love that you can cap them with a. But it solved a real problem. I mean, prior to these chip clips, which no one even has anyway, you can't find one when you need one. I got some. You to be honest. seal. I got chip you clips. seal this 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 cardboard tube, and it really does work. I mean, these things stay fresh. You know, as long as possible. I actually even love the process of peeling off the plastic and then peeling back the foil at first and rolling it back. And it's like it's almost like opening a new peanut butter. There's something very satisfactory and tactile about peeling back, popping that that can open, and then looking at that sleeve of perfection as it goes all the way down to the end. It's such a cool thing. Still, it doesn't get old. I love taking the first stack of chips. I can't take one. I can't. Once I pop, I cannot stop. It's true. And I don't just eat one chip. Sometimes I eat three, four, five chips in a row. And I bite into them like they're a big sandwich of chip. Uh, and right. let's move on. <laughs> they taste like a baked chip, even though they're fried. They're they they are, they're, 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 they they don't have any grease. You don't deal with a bag full of crumbs and shards, and then you got to get into the end, and you got to pick well, them up like your hand is a crane at, I, at an I arcade, and then you got to dump them, and you're getting the chips all over your shirt. If I may interject, this nonsense that you don't get broken Pringles at the bottom of the can is nonsense. I've gotten plenty of broken a Pringles. A couple, a at couple the bottom of Pringles of may shift the door in shipping. But, <laughs> I've, had uh, to, I've had to do the, the shot of to get the bottom. Well, of you the know Pringles. what's great though? Actually, actually, I don't mind when the bottom of my Pringles has a few broken up because I really actually love to tilt the can back and have them slide in. Again, another perfect, maybe inadvertent, but a perfect because when you when you do the bag of chips. You're picking them up with your hands. Then when you're finally done, you lean that bag back. If you didn't open that bag perfectly, it's got a slit somewhere. That thing's not coming right in your mouth. And also, you have to like kind of hit it and shake it and pull the bag out so it's taut. And then, you know, sometimes you misjudge that and the, the chips hit you all over the face. This is like drinking from 
a perfect reservoir, a perfect cup. They slide right in your mouth. And don't get me started. Oh, even when the chips are gone, uh, are done, how the how the the cardboard tubing lives on. It has a life of its own. I yell into it. I mm-hmm. use it as a microphone. Uh, I sometimes put other things in it. I sometimes close it and put it somewhere there as the fool the next person your, who some thinks some it might be Bikini underwear full. in there. What's that? Bikini underwear. You can put anything you want. You could use it as a time capsule. Put it in the yard. You can grow a plant out of that. I bet you. You could clean out. In, <laughs> you could clean out the inside, and you could use it for storage. Uh, listen, you've said a lot about it's, Pringles. It's a lot of fun. You've it's said a lot, a lot about Pringles. But I've noticed something. You've stuck to the one thing that I, the only thing that I appreciate about Pringles, which is the novelty. A can is fun. It's satisfying holding that tube. It is satisfying. The, the the quality that goes into that tube is 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 to be to be appreciated. Um, and the shape of the chip and the way it's stacked in the can is something to 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 at times be in awe of. The, however, the ergonomics cannot be undersold. I, I I agree. However, the, the shape however, of that chip is wonderful. It's however, great for dipping and it's great for your mouth and tongue. However, when it comes to taste, there's a reason Cheetos doesn't have a cap on it. Cheetos is like, you open this, you're done. You are finishing this right now. Cheetos, you have to. Yeah. They're the most You have addicting. to, because you're not going to get orange all over yourself twice. Plus, the bags are very small. No one's eating a large, the most, large bag of Cheetos. They're the most addicting snack food to me on planet Earth. As far as things you can walk uh, next to Doritos. I would only put it next to Doritos, and Doritos are the all-time kings. But Cheetos, you walk down that snack aisle, you get a... Dude, I could eat a bag of Cheetos almost like a meal itself. Like I could almost, I could just almost down a bag of Cheetos, and I would feel like I almost ate like a meal. Oh, really? So they do sell meals at Seven Eleven. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say that. Do you want to keep bringing up the sh- thing, and, or do you want to move on to the nice thing and now? Do you go to Seven Eleven because you know you can get your Cheetos twenty four seven there, no matter what country? Or- you know what you're like. You're like the wife when you cheat. She keeps bringing it up. And you <laughs> go, honey, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that analogy. <laughs> I'll be that person. <laughs> uh, I bought you a coat and I said I was sorry. Uh, let's drop it. The, uh, <laughs> um, the I, Cheetos I th- look like growths. Dude, like, they look like barnacles off a ship. It's so it's such a substantial thing in your mouth. You put that in your mouth. The weight and cr- you want to talk crunch. You bite down a Cheeto, you're like, this is like, this, it is substantial, man. It's a substantial crunch. It is substantial. And the flavor of Cheetos, I don't know. I know it's nacho cheese. I made the joke earlier. I don't know what cheese it is. I guess it's nacho cheese, right? It's, it's Cheetos and nacho cheese, right? No, are they? I don't think they are, actually. Who knows what they are? I just have never tasted anything like a Cheeto in my life. <laughs> because they invented the taste. Yes. I've never had uh, Wisconsin cheddar. Che- oh, wait, they actually have real Wisconsin white cheddar cheese somehow in that, in that powder. But there's a reason Cheeto's hand is a thing. The, the orange hand of shame. Yeah, they had to make it a thing. That's why. They had to market it and, and make it a thing because, because it's not a good thing. And they had to try to convince it's everyone a great thing. that it's a cool, fun, good thing. Oh, it's a great thing. You can't, you can't eat a bag of Cheetos at a Diddy party. It's a saying white that party. It's, you can't do it. It's actually a corn puff, really, and that it has like some cheese on the top. Oh, oh so I got a, news for you. A corn I got puff news cloaked as a Maybe cheese Maybe if puff. you could have Cheetos at a Diddy's party, we could have stopped some of these horrible things he did because we would have seen some orange fingerprints in the wrong places. Honestly, I mean, like the Cheetos hand, like if you're out and then you got to lick your hands, you know, oh, to it's get the it best. off. It's not the best because if you haven't washed your hands and you had a bag of Cheetos, you're not going to leave that on there. You can't get it off with just a napkin. The fine particles are staying ingrained in the in no, the, in the you ridges of your off. skin and fingerprints. You lick it off. I know, but if you haven't washed your hand before that, well, now you're putting your filthy uh, hands in your buddy, mouth. Buddy, you're already you're, you're a bag of Cheetos deep with an unwashed hand. That the, whatever's on your hands been in your mouth already. Like you know, I'm no, wash no, your hand no, before no. you. You don't, you, put, you don't put your hand in your mouth. I'm saying you're touching the thing. You're putting the thing in your mouth. Well, you, you know, wash your hands before. I you knew eat. you were gonna try to make Cheetos dust something positive it because is. you have to because there's no way to spin it. You're getting cheese dust all over you. It's the Cheetos dust to me is a, is literally the brother of glitter. I hate glitter. I I despise it. I don't want to be anywhere near it. Once you get it on you, good luck getting it off you. It only gets on your fingers. I've never gotten it like on my clothes. Oh, I'm sure it gets on people. And I clothes. will tell you, 
if you want to talk bottom of the bag, there is nothing better than bottom of the bag cheese Cheetos when it's like those little like when it's like uh, <laughs> dipping dots of yeah. Cheetos. It's so good, dude. I, it's so good. Look, I'm not saying that like I have something healthy, but I know for a fact. I read an article. It takes five thousand cows to generate a year <laughs> supply of Cheetos. <laughs> That's upsetting. That's insane. Um, they have that that dye in there that's banned in like five other countries. That red oh, dye. They no do? Form, that's without certain. I won't harp on it, but because a lot of products have it, like peanut m ms have a lot have cereal. Captain Crunch has it. Crunch berries. It's it was a disappointing list to read. I'll tell you that. <laughs> they're banned. I think they're banned in maybe the UK. But here's what I'm talking about. Okay, you're dealing here with two. You got two modes f- for the Cheetos. You got Cheetos and you got the hot. What are they called? Flaming Flame, Hot. Flame you, you mean the Cheetos they had to make a movie about on Netflix? That's how popular they are? Oh, what is the movie about Netflix? They made a movie about Flaming Hot a Cheetos. Doc? No. A scripted movie directed by Ava Longoria, I believe. No. Yeah, it was. Yes. What? About? About fl- the creation of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Oh, oh, oh. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I meant what I said. They made a movie about yeah. Flaming Hot Cheetos. It's called Flaming Hot. Well, it's yeah, based on a true sense. story. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they can make a movie about Julius Pringles as well. <laughs> they have it, though. What I'm saying is you got, you got two modes there. You got regular and Flaming Hot. You've been down to Pringles Isle lately? Brother, I'm you glad you brought Pringles this up. Island? I'm it's, glad you brought this it's, up. It's wonderful. I find It's innovative. It. It's exciting. And they keep the bangers. The bangers are going nowhere. You got your sour creams. You got your regulars. You got your salt and vince. I'm glad you brought okay, it up. You got your barbecues. I'm glad you, got you brought your it up. Cheese flavor. They got the staples. They got the pillars. But now you got. I mean, pizza I like too. And they have ranch. They are. They are expansive. I find every flavor I've had of Pringles that's not Pringles gross. Salt I, and vince. Sour I never had cream the, and onion. I find their sour cream and onion to be the worst sour cream and onion flavored chip on the market. Let me just tell you right there. You want hot? Scroll, scroll a little bit. No. Cheddar and sour cream. You want hot? No. How about that one right there, I, my friend? Nobody wants La habanero. Sas, uh, habaneras. Who wants a habanero? Ch- oh, even an Adobe Pringle. one now. Oh, it's I love gross. it. We're, 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 now we're, we're, we're these going like, to other. We're going into other cuisines now. These we're look like rock gut to me. These look gross, man. I'm not saying. I'm not saying a bag of flaming hots won't make you fucking squirt. <laughs> but I'm just saying <laughs> these, these look really salted. gross, man. Listen, reduce salad. Listen to me. All I'm saying is. With, with Pringles, you got, I mean, what's the total count in that right there's now? There's other Cheetos. You got, what, 20, 20 options of Pringles? By, by the way, there's other styles of Cheetos. Where there's the they? balls. There's no, the no, no. puffs. Che- Cheetos whatever. are the, the ones that look like a growth that you have to go to the doctor but for. But I'm saying, like, Cheetos has Cheetos has different variations. But my point is... Uh, harvest blends, I'll multi-grains. Make this point. I'll make this point about <laughs> Cheetos versus... Sweet potato. It, I, I'll make this point. I've made this <gasps> point... I have made this point against I, I see scorching sp- extreme multiple it's kinds. So gross. Buffalo Ew. scorching sour cream, scorching no. cheddar, scorching buffalo. We're in the we're in the we're scorching chili and lime. We're in the game. It's gross. You got dude. flame and hot. We got like ten hot items no. here. It's gross. I, I, I'll say Why this to you. I, I'll say this. They, they look like gross flavors to me. It doesn't look appetizing. And I will say this to you about Pringles. And I've said it again. I've said it many times in the past about other foods. You're co- they're overcompensating. When they got to put out this many flavors and this many things, no, they're overcompensating. They, they, you, for, you might for, say that for a company that is not made it, but they're a, they're a powerhouse. They're an institution. They, they don't have to overcompensate. They could sell their five and get away with it. They want, let me tell you something. Do you, do look, you realize if we travel Cheetos a lot, puffs, you see a lot of hotels, look, right? Look, there's, there's a hot lime. Where, no, what is where, it? What where? does it say? Hot lime and chili? Hot Lyman. That's it. Those are the three. Hold on. No, no, no. We've got a whole page here. No, those are not Cheetos. They're different. Cheetos Puffs. Why does Cheetos Puffs not count? I don't understand. For me, a Cheeto is that one that looks like a... I... I, Yeah, and to me, a Pringle is the Pringle and then maybe the sour cream and onion counts. These are all those habanero flavors and all that shit. No, because the other ones didn't have... like They were different shapes. Like Cheetos Puffs is the balls. Like I don't count that the same thing. All I right. think a Cheeto is that thing. Well, right there. I think it's a little unfair. Well, look, no, well, they're okay. These are Cheetos: tangy chili fusion, cheddar jalapeno, buffalo. Knock knock. Uh, well, who's there? Over. Over what? Overcompensating? No, <laughs> no. And here's why: we 
Look at this Cheetos, Cheetos getting popcorn. They're getting into the popcorn game. No, they're not over uh, <laughs> They're not over -counting. I will tell you this because I. W they got a mac and cheese. <laughs> oh no, my Did God. You know that? No. <laughs> she, they got pretzels now, too. Yeah. God, just do me a favor. You don't, I don't even want to say it. Just guys, just slide this, the. Uh, just scrub back. <laughs> just scrub back 20 seconds. And then when he says the word Pringles. <laughs> They, got they, have a, they have a simply where they're trying to say it's healthy for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's simply Cheetos. It's healthy Cheetos. Scroll up a little. Fantastic sticks. <laughs> oh, my God. Baked Cheetos. Yeah, just scrub back. And then I when he say, says Pringles, you say aloud Cheetos. I say I will stay consistent in my argument. <laughs> Every one of these flavors was disgusting to me. I haven't seen oh, any of these. Looks so gross. You know what? I had to do that. Who, who did it? Who did it first? They're trying to keep up with the Joneses, or should I say the Julius? <laughs> <laughs> these, the fact that they're putting out a simply Cheetos is is bad. That's you know, crazy. So in, in a way, they're polar opposites, right? Because you got you got the Pringle, which is an exact clone of each other it's neat it's clean it's it's like you know many it's much more structured cheetos you pull those things out and you don't know what what, what thing you're getting you know like they're they're very like they are very like polar opposites in in their in their in their essence here's another thing i like about cheetos cheetos has worked their way into recipes cheetos is one of those foods where you see i'll give you that you see like Cheeto, uh, Cheeto stuffing or whatever like the hell. Cheeto did. chicken or whatever I'll, I'll get yeah. that. Yeah. but let me, let me say this i was saying this before you travel a lot you're on the road a lot you go in hotels a lot yeah, M many if not yes. most hotels right now, in the mini bar in the snack bar, yeah. the mini Pringles has made its way as almost commonplace as the choice of chip for hotels. You will never see a mini bag of flaming hot Cheetos in the snack. Uh, You're the talking snack about in the room at the hotel. Yeah, in the room. You don't mean the deli. No, 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 not no. deli. You don't. You know what I mean? Not the little shop. You mean in the room? No, I mean the the the. the, the, know, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, what the hell is that called? The, the mini bar? Mini bar, but yeah. Like, yeah, with the, yeah. Okay, you know, you're right. You are right, and I am impressed when I see a tiny can of Pringles in a mini bar. That's I'm like, fun. That's, that's classy. That's fun. It's got a nice nice vibe. Um, but I'll also say this, because we kind of glazed over it in the preamble. Just uh, feel bad for those 5,000 cows. I do feel bad for those 5,000. <laughs> when it comes to icons, I mean, dude, Chester Cheetah, he's, uh, he's up there with he's up there with the Nestle Quick Rabbit. He's up there with the Trix Rabbit. I mean, this guy is... Do you believe that? Yes. Well, maybe I'm out of touch. Cheetah, come on. Chester Cheetah is you part of... You just named of, the, the Nestle Quick and the Trix Rabbit? They go che hard. Cheetahs, bro. well, they've just been around longer, but Cheetahs, he's there to stay, dude. He's not going anywhere. Really? Geico, look, the little Geico gecko is going to go into that category one day. You know what I mean? He just mm. hasn't been around long I enough. thought you were going to like throw Tony the Tiger Toucan, Sam Lucky. I'm saying Sam Chester is stepping in. I don't, I'll say this. Unless, maybe I'm mis mistaken, but I will say this. I can't think of another snack chip or, or that kind of snack that has an iconic mascot like that. Pringles? <laughs> No, everybody knows the face on Pringles, but nobody knew his name was Julius Pringles until right this second. But we knew what he was and what he was about. It's, it's the it's the thing on the can. But yeah. but I'm talking about a, a a mascot, dude. I'm talking about a Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, a, a mascot, mm. Chester Cheetah. I cannot think of one other thing that's not cereal. Uh, you, oh, that you would snack on. I mean. That, you know, there's no chip that has a mascot like that. Mm, I don't know. It's not coming. It's all co there. Maybe cook. Is there a cookie? Well, Keebler elves. Yeah, don't sleep on them. I'm not. I'm saying no. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could live in the Keebler village. <laughs> <laughs> I do. What's I have your, a fantasy yeah. of living in the trees, but the trees that like the trees that are like made up like inside, they have interiors. You know, I love a tree with like a nice arch door on it with a, a lantern, like a, like a live light, like lit gas lantern on it, like a nice little tree in like a cozy village, maybe in a snow globe, like where the Keeblers live or where they, where they lived in like, um, the princess bride. I really would love to live in a, in a like the parents stay in bed. Like some people that live in trees, like characters that live in trees. I've always had a fantasy to live in those trees. You know, you can make it sort of happen. Like there's videos on YouTube of guys that build like. They build like a mansion under under the ground and stuff, yeah. like and with mud and stuff. Well, like, I probably can't uh, get into that. I'm saying there's probably a way you can make the street thing happen. <laughs> I don't know if I could build a mud mansion underground. Not not today. Not this week. Right? Not, not, not <laughs> it takes them like a, a month, but it's no, but amazing. Don't you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I love. You know what I love? I love a lantern. Uh, a, a lantern that's like off off of the off of the structure of of, of the tree or the house or the cottage. I love a cottage. And I love a, a live burning lantern. 
Just a whole row. For, or the lamppost at Live Burn. I just want to live in a snow globe is what I'm saying. <laughs> I want to live in a Christmas village. I just really, I really want to do that. I really want to do that. Um, I, would, I, would, I would work with the elves. I'm looking at the phones here. You're getting rattled so far. Really? Pringles are absolute trash. Cheetos are elite. Cheetos are literally finger licking good. I'll tell you why, though. Twitter as an app is geared toward yeah, more of a, che a Cheetos crowd. Cheetos is the in thing right now. It's Chester. They they fall for it hook, line, and sinker. They don't know that he's he's date <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He walks around with no pants, by the nobody way. Ever he wears licked, a shirt, no pants. Nobody ever licked Pringle dust off their fingers. I, I like do how every Brad day. thinks. I do every day of my life. Sal entered modern times and didn't use the phrase cheese doodle again. <laughs> it is a cheese doodle. Uh, uh, my hand always gets stuck in the Pringles can, never been stuck in a Cheetos bag. Well, Pringles are made of sawdust and Elmer's glue. <laughs> Cheetos are crunchy and fun oh, shapes. It's so funny that they say that, but then they they omit what Cheetos are made from. By the way, it's right there. You just turn the can. You don't shove your forearm down to the bottom like your baby Jessica in the well in 1987. Pringles hates big-handed people. That is true. Like it is when I got older, that Guys, can got annoyed. The can. Sometimes there's too many, and this has happened. I've had to tip the can at a certain point, and too many Pringles come out. And then you want to talk about a mess. It's annoying. But <laughs> I am buying it. That has you, can't even, you can't even not smile when you say it. Get out of here with that, bro. It's, Get out of here with that. That's, you know what that is? You just described to me one of those BS like moments in, a, in an infomercial with like tired of not getting it. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> it has happened to me, but you're right. Yeah. I'm not that mad about it. Um, uh, puffy are better than crunchy Cheetos. That's what I'm saying. The puffy is called the doodle. I was there last puff, time. That's uh, thank you, Isabella, for the vote for Cheetos. But that is not that is not true. There is no way puffy is better. Cheese dust is the best thing in the world. This is what I'm saying, dude. People love that cheese dust, dude. No, that and I was wanted a bit about it. I remember he would do it. The place would go crazy. Yeah, like like I said, crazy. Uh, you know, Cheetos and Frito Lay. They should thank their lucky stars that there was a a, a, a nice spin. On the cheese dust. Because before that, it ruined clothes. It ruined car seats. It ruined furniture. Everybody was always it looking ruined at dates. This broad it is going potential uh, first base action. This broad's going hard in the paint for hot Cheetos with lime and saying those are the only Cheetos worth eating. Wow. That is crazy. Pringles are one shape and size and come in the most inconvenient can. I'm surprised at the hate on the can. You're crazy, dude. You, you're cra they're crazy. When that thing's empty and you yell into it, it's like a microphone. <laughs> it really is. I don't think I've ever finished Pringles without at least saying like one Whitney Houston song into this the This is can. a plus for you. Right here you can't plus. make the weird duck bill with Cheetos. I've never done that, actually, but sure, I'll throw that on the list. Um, all right, let's go to Humble Pie. One last one just said we Pringles. We got, uh, just again, 6,000 6, votes, votes here right. in the last 30 minutes. I don't know where this v is going. hovering over Pringles. I don't know where this is going. Really, V? I would have taken you for Cheetos. Really? No, she said before we started. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, she was so, going so on. So can we just take, because I really don't know where this is going to end up. Let's go around the room, and not just who's going to win, but give me like what you think the percentages might be. We'll start with Trevor Karate. Just percentages? Yeah, who's Pringles Cheetos, but what's the percentage going to be? Uh, I think it's going to be Cheeto, uh, Cheetos 60-40. Okay, okay. Yeah, I say 80-20. <gasps> I really do. Jesus do you think Christ. Cheetos is going to win 80-20? 75-25 I think for 70. Sure. After all these years, that can't be. <laughs> I think 60-40 or 70 no, I mean, after all you've yeah. seen, that's not a 75-25. I don't know. I don't know. I love Pringles. I'm going to say Pringles 55-45. to 45. Oh, Boy, right there. Chicone. I don't know That's about but that. But the Cheetos are very popular. All right, let's Cheetos do it. Up, but Humble you're, we're pie. sleeping on Pringles right now. Here Come we on. go. V voting. For oh, my God, dude. Are you kidding me? Whoa. You don't ever doubt Rice Aroni Ciccone, ever, in your life. In your life, sixty-two hundred votes. He looked at it. No, I did. I swear. No, to he, I swear to God. <laughs> you see the genuine. He jumped out of his seat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Taste buddies, listen to this, baby. Pringles takes it. I am so happy because I truly didn't know where this was going, but I thought Cheetos might have the edge. I hate this. Seventy-five, twenty-five. <laughs> v, V. Where is? Where's your head at? There's a movie 
Got it. <laughs> I, I can't believe this just happened. You got Pringles at 54.5%. If you round up, it's 55. <laughs> to Cheetos, 45.5. I mean, you were on yeah. the nose. Yeah. You know how hard it is to do that? It's very good. I mean, it could have been anything. I may have won the episode, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that was oh, very wait, good. I, I snuck in a nice little win here with the Pringles. Yeah, it was very and good. And this was, by the way, this was, we have a note, like a, little, a note in app where we have all different, you know, yeah. ideas. And, and and we we this we found this. This has been in there for a long time. That was very good. Wow. That was... <laughs> I'm honestly upset. I'm honestly upset about that one. That's back-to-back -back L's, bro. I'm sorry, though. But you'll turn it around. You always do. Um, I still love you, though. I love you, too. <laughs>